everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, so doing a true experiment here today. I am doing a straight pour, but I am using a, uh, well, the Quinacridone Magenta from Liquitex Basics is semi-transparent. Usually I use an opaque, um, but, uh, I did add a touch of titanium white. I mean, like a pea size to this cup. Um, just because when it dries, I wanted it to be a, just a tad brighter um, than it would if it were just the straight magenta. And so typically I use an opaque that is glossier than the uh, cell making paints matte paints will sell in a straight pour when mixed thin enough and used with an opaque paint that has a glossier finish. Uh, so we're going to see what happens using the magenta. I have these colors here. This is Liquitex Basics uh, Thalo Blue and Thalo Green. Uh, mixed with some titanium white. I don't have a titanium white jar. It broke, so I have it in a separate container, but it's the Liquitex uh, titanium white. One has a bit more white added to it than the other. And they both have the DecoArt Americana Decor Satin Enamel in pure white. This is a fresh jar. And uh, these, it's a really strong cell maker. So I want to see if I can still get the cells using this semi-transparent paint, semi-opaque, however you want to call it. Um, so we're going to see what happens. These paints are mixed one part paint to two parts flow draw. That mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water, 10% Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is, this is about a two on my consistency scale. It does make a mound, but it disappears very quickly. The stream off the stick is very smooth and thin. If it appears lumpy coming off your stick, if it's not a thin stream, that means you need to mix it more. Um, and just to note, there is, in these cell making paints, it's 50% of the satin enamels and then whatever other color you're gonna mix it with. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all the information that you need, the exact paint brands, color, the consistency, the recipe, the technique, all of the things that I can't fit onto a card. This is the picture of the painting in that video. This box here contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom is a color palette that is used in that painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those two colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. The first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in my pouring cup. I'm going to do two ounces and reserve the rest for my canvas. And I'll probably save a little bit um, to do, uh, to put some on top here. So you'll notice I've covered my sides first. The way that I do a straight pour, I mix my paints very thin. That allows me to get those groovy effects. The thinner your paint is, the more likely it is to uh, have the reactions from fluid dynamics. 
two of those reactions being the hydrophobic effect, which is what this would be, and the Rayleigh-Taylor instability. I have done a video demonstrating the difference between the two, if you care to go check that out. So I cover my sides because my paints are mixed thin. This is mixed with Floetrol. Um, and what can happen is you don't get great coverage on the sides. And I would rather just cover the sides first so they look good no matter what happens. And a base coat, this is my base coat. I'm laying this down because I need for my paints to slide around easily on this canvas. If I pour onto a naked canvas with no base coat, something has to stick to the canvas first. And so that's gonna be the paint that is on the edge of your puddle. And then the paint will just roll over itself as you stretch it. The center will roll over what used to be the edges and you will lose whatever cool stuff you have going on on your on the edges of your puddle. All right, my base coat is down and now I'm going to put some paint in a cup. So these colors are very, very close as you can see, but what happens is when, uh, when these blend together, it gives it a very 3D effect because it just looks like shadows and highlights. Okay, I'm going to pour from up high. I want these paints to sink and churn and blend. And I'm pouring towards the front of the cup. These colors are going to look very pretty together. So this, this particular color was a mix of the phthalo blue and green, and it's mostly blue. It's just a touch of the green. Now for the lighter color. And generally what happens, whatever is the last color that I put in my cup, um, a little bit of it winds up at the bottom of the cup. So that ends up in the very center. So I try to use the color that has the most contrast with my background color. Background color is the first color that goes into the cup. The base coat is what goes on the canvas. The background is what goes in the cup. Because that color falls to the background and the cells pop up. Let me pop these bubbles before I pour so that they don't pop up through my cells. Now, one of the things that helps create cells in this particular technique, oh, I missed a spot on the side. So the hydrophobic effect, what happens is, actually, let me, so see these paints come to the top. And so I'll just take what is left in my cup and go over top of that so that those paints have a chance to react with the background color. The fact that it was making cells on top is a good thing. That means I have a good chance of getting cells on my canvas. Okay, so I'm going to pour quickly spin slowly and i'm going clockwise i'm going to do my best to find the center and stay in it actually let me make sure that my canvas is properly aligned
Okay. As I get closer to the end of the cup, I will get closer to the canvas. This will give me more control. And I'm going to wait for that light color to come out. Hopefully it will. Here it comes. So this will give me a nice focal point in the center. That's why I always put that color with the most contrast in last. Yes, a lot of it is going to end up going off the sides, but the center will be the focal point. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay. Whew. I almost, almost botched the landing. Okay. So here's what's happening. We pop these bubbles. So there are bubbles that are created with this technique, the way it goes in the cup and the way it goes on the canvas, those paints churn. And they create bubbles. And when I pop the bubbles, that are on the canvas, it comes to the top and it brings some of that paint with it. As I mentioned earlier, the matte paints will sell when used with a glossier paint. And so as those little tiny dots come up, the little tiny pinhead size cells come up when it has this hydrophobic effect, it spreads. It's pushing that background paint away. So you can see that these cells are just gonna to continue to grow and get bigger. But if I had some of the magenta come up through my cells, they're going to stay small. So that's why we pop the bubbles in the base coat first because it's not gonna make anything pretty happen. So the more I pop these bubbles, the more of these little cells are gonna pop up and then they'll grow. That's why we're patient. That's why we don't tilt or spin right away. Let these cells develop. Let this paint puddle percolate. And then when you stretch it, you will get those giant juicy boulder cells, which are, you know, just gorgeous. So they have that awesome 3D effect. And if I were to spin it right away, I may still get cells. Um, but they might just look like pearl cells. And I'm going for those giant 3D boulder cells. So you'll see there's like bands of color or of you know the cells happening out here. A lot of this is going to get spun off. <laughs> Satchmo has the zoomies. Um, the reason that I focus so much on the center is because this is going to become that. It's going to spread out a lot. Oh, Satchmo. Oh, so let me tell you a little story. So yesterday I got, um, I got some catnip and uh, forgot to put it away when I got home. And when I came back in the living room, 
there was catnip everywhere everywhere and it was a big bag of catnip my cats were high as kites they they had no interest in saying hello to me they were just rolling around oh dear yeah I've had that happen one other time with a Siamese cat and I swear it was meowing backwards. It was going, wow, <laughs> wow. You probably like mom, the room is spinning, make it stop. Okay. So I have plenty of cells developing here. I think I can give it a spin now. Uh, I will get more cells popping up in there. But I think we can, we can give this a twirl. But you see, allowing it to develop like that really does uh, help to give you those big cells if you allow them to develop first and then stretch them you can get some really magical effects okay I might need to give these edges a little bit of love okay so I kind of tilted it to the side when I was finished pouring so it would all kind of settle at at the bottom down there um, and I just added what I had left in the cups and I'm going to just put a little something on these edges and they will stretch they might even disappear completely but if not, there's a little something there. Don't have those weird bikini edges. So when I spin this again, that will stretch out and it will have a more natural appearance. And quite possibly just tilt off completely. But that also helps to give you a little more um, on your corners to move. Freshen up that base coat a little. So you can see it's mostly gone, but it does add a little something something, just in case. Okay, just a little bit more on this one corner. having trouble. Okay. Now, so you see when those paints stretch out, how it starts to get that super 3D effect. It already looked 3D, but when you stretch it, it's even more. That looks super cool to me. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to let this sit and see what happens and I will bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. Came out really pretty. Those cells definitely appear 3D. I guess I will have to have to try some more of the uh, semi-opaques and see what happens. In the beginning, I tried them and they didn't work, but I think with these satin, satin enamels, they're so strong that uh, maybe it doesn't matter. But that center glows. Definitely has that appearance of being backlit, which is why I do that brightest color last. But there it is. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Oh, uh, I guess I'll, I'll let you guys know. Um, I mentioned it at the end of my auction, but I am going to be starting a Patreon account. And one of the things that I will be featuring is Zoom meetings, like Q&A uh, Zooms, and also just some socials, some happy hour type things. Um, but in the Q&As, one of the things that we can do is you can hold up a painting, and if you want it diagnosed about what went wrong, I can help you with that. Um, but I will be offering more things as well. Uh, but that, I think, is something that I'm really looking forward to because I would like to get to not know all of you a little better, more than just your screen name. Get to see, see your face, hear your voice. But, uh, yeah, so if there's, like, something that you would like to see offered in my Patreon, please... Say so in the comments. Let me know what it is that you would like to see happen over there. And uh, I will get that up and running after I get all of these paintings shipped out from the auction. But if you like this video, if you enjoy, if you found it educational, please do like and share. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you are subscribed, please make sure you have clicked that bell. A lot of people aren't getting notifications. Um, it's like 0.03% of my subscribers are watching my videos. It's crazy. So I think people aren't being notified. Uh, you have to click that bell and, and say, notify me of all. And then you will receive notifications whenever I have new uploads. And check out the description box below for links to my affiliates, DecoArt being one of them. Uh, if you want to grab yourself some of these awesome cell making paints, you can head over to the DecoArt website using the link in the description box. And there is a coupon code as well. And I have other affiliates as well that uh, if you're stocking up, you have coupon codes, the affiliate links. I receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. So that is really helpful to the creators that you follow. Spread love. Uh, and also in the description box, you'll find the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards for sale. And you'll also find the link to our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. All right, that is it for me for today. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.